Hey everybody, welcome back to Brickhouse Vintage. My name is Ethan. So today we're gonna to be doing a makeover on this solid oak sideboard that we picked up for $80 at an auction. We're gonna be doing a raw wood look refinish on this. So if you wanna see how it turns out, make sure you stick around. So like I said, we uh, paid $80 for this, which is a little bit more than we typically, you know, like to spend, but this piece had really good bones to it. So it was in really rough shape. It needed a lot of work, but it was a nice solid piece. Uh, it wasn't veneered over or anything. So, you know, it, it had potential. Um, as you can see, it's just, you know, the top wasn't attached and it was actually a top that somebody had redone at some point and kind of put together. Uh, you know, there's pieces missing. It was really wobbly and shaking. Uh, you know, obviously it had a mirror on at some point that, you know, is not anymore. We have cracks, you know, just all kinds of damage to it, but the piece had potential. It was a nice solid oak piece and it had potential. So that's what we loved about it. And in the end, um, we should be able to sell this for at least $500, if not a little bit more. So spending a little bit more at the beginning was worth it for us. And with that, we're just gonna get started fixing this piece. Uh, as you can see, this one track here was uh, you know, broken out at some point. So we need to make sure we fit that back in and just kind of repair all the cracks and everything else that's damaged on this piece. And there was a little hidden nail down there uh, where the track had to go in, so I had to pull that out. And then I just use my syringe and kind of get in some of these cracks. Uh, I'm gonna go and you know put clamps on this in a little bit here. Uh, but you know, you want to get kind of get glued down in deep into those cracks and make sure you're getting a nice hold when you pull it together. And these syringes come in really handy for that. And now for these side panels, and you're going to see me do it with the doors a little bit later, but I'm just kind of using a block and aligning these side panels. So there was some gaps where the panels kind of slid over a little bit. Uh, you could kind of see the cracks at the edges. So I'm just kind of using a block of wood and kind of tapping it around and getting it to where it's nice and aligned and those gaps are closed. And then I go back and just kind of get some glue and spot glue the insides there on the panels to hold the whole thing tight so they don't move again. Because back uh, years ago, you know, when they built these pieces, a lot of it was just kind of held together by mortise and tenon or, uh, you know, kind of tongue and groove. And a lot of it was kind of free uh, you know they they had some nails here and there but some of it was kind of free to move uh, but decades later of all that movement uh, it's not something we want now so you know we need to just kind of find those parts and pieces that are moving and glue them together and make sure it makes a nice solid piece And now for this drawer here, you can see that it's sliding back a little bit too far because the uh, the block in the back was missing. Uh, so it, you know, obviously that's there to stop the drawer from going back too far. So I went and found a piece of wood uh, that matched the same size as the block and cut it down. And I'm going to glue that in the back uh, just to space it out the same way as the other drawers. And I also just put a screw down just for a little extra hold. And next I go back over the whole piece and clean it with some Dawn dish soap and warm water. And now we are gonna be sanding this whole piece down, but I just wanna make sure I'm getting all the grease and dirt off uh, before I start sanding it. And 
and we go ahead and take the doors off so it's a little bit easier to work with. And next, I'm just going to do some repairs on the doors here. Um, you know, they need a little help too. You know, some of the panels were sliding a little bit, so I had to do the same thing as I did on the, the sides. Uh, but also just kind of gluing some of these uh, joints here and just pulling it together, uh, getting kind of a more square and tighter uh, shape to the door. And again, just kind of spot gluing these panels and just tapping them around to you know, kind of get them square and make sure those gaps are taken care of at the sides. And believe it or not, the top being actually detached already made it a little bit easier to work on it gave me the ability to kind of you know flip it around get a little more space to work on it and eventually when we're working on the rest of the piece um, i can actually do that piece first and then move it off to the side and it gives me some space to work on the rest of the piece And now I start the tedious process of sanding this piece. Um, I, I started out with a 150 grit sanding pad just to see, you know, how it would start tearing into it. Um, it was very slow going, surprisingly, uh, on this top. Now, the rest of the body wasn't quite as bad. Uh, I did use a 150 on the rest of the body, and it worked fine because it was the original finish on it. This top, when somebody had redone this, was a real pain. Um, I eventually worked my way down to, I believe, a 60 grit sand, sanding disc um, just to kind of get this off. I actually was working on just the top alone for like two days. Um, it just it didn't look like it was that tough, but it was definitely a labor of love getting this top sanded down. And after I did get it all sanded down, I took a 220 grit sanding paper and just kind of, you know, obviously went with the grains. Uh, you want to get some of those swirl marks out, just kind of give it a finished sanding and uh, get it a little more smoothed out. I'm going to use a damp rag and wipe the dust off. And as you can see here, um, oak does have like deeper grains. So you can see a lot of the kind of darkness from that finish still remaining. It's okay because we're gonna kind of handle that in a certain way here in a little bit that you're gonna see. Um, we're gonna use kind of a wash to blend everything together and it's gonna pull you know, all the different colors kind of together and make it look really cohesive. And then I start the tedious process of sanding the whole body. And for this, I'm just using a 150 grit sanding disc. And it was coming off really nicely, uh, nothing like the top. And with kind of a lot of the flat surfaces, and you know the sandable areas on this piece 
this is one of the reasons why we thought it was a great piece to do this finish on as well um, just because it you know was a fairly easy piece to sand down and refinish uh, some pieces have so much detail it's just it's really tough to do uh, but between the you know kind of nice solid wood piece um, the beautiful wood it was in nice condition overall um, outside of you know the superficial scratches and, and things like that um, it, it was a relatively easy piece to sand uh, so this you know it took a long time but it wasn't that difficult to sand it just took time I'm just using the uh, sanding pad attachment for my multi-tool and just kind of getting in these corners that I couldn't get with the orbital sander. And again, this is just going to get most of it out. Uh, there's still going to be a little bit that remains in there. It's just inevitable that you won't be able to get it all. It's okay, uh, you know, for the look that we are going for and the way we're going to kind of blend all this together, it's going to be okay and it's going to all pull together. So just bear with me for a little bit and you'll see how we kind of tackle this and blend the whole piece together. and then I move on to the doors. And as I did with the top, I just go back over with a 220 grit sandpaper. And next I'm going to attach the top. I'm just going to give it a nice bead of glue and put a few uh, strategic screws up through to make sure it has a nice hold. And then we go ahead and remove the drawer hardware. And we're gonna give all those a nice sanding. And now I just went and used um, one of the screws I attached into the chuck of my drill here, my drill press. And I kind of just used that as a sander to get these, these knobs nice and sanded. Um, kind of saves a little bit of time rather than just sitting there and hand sanding each one. Uh, so it made a little bit quicker work of sanding these down.
and then I just go back and attach all the knobs. And so for this piece, we're gonna be doing a wash with this mango chalk paint. And now this is the color Xavier. It's a little bit on the grayer side, uh, but we you know, had tried a little bit of this to make sure that it was the look we wanted uh, before you know, we obviously did the whole piece. And so basically Heather is just mixing the chalk paint with water until it's a good wash consistency. Obviously you can go a little bit heavier on the paint, uh, you can go a little bit more on the water. It depends on the consistency you want for your project. Um, so we just kind of mixed it by eye, by feel, until it was the consistency that we wanted. And then we just apply it with a brush, and then we're wiping it off pretty soon after. Um, you notice Heather's just kind of working in smaller sections. You don't want to do too much and let it dry. Um, that it will become more of a paint layer. You want to make sure you're kind of wiping it off fairly soon after and just work in small sections um, so you don't have too much paint soaking in because you want it just more of a wash. And now as you can kind of see already, it's it's toning down the dark grains and some of that dark existing finish. Uh, it's kind of pulling together some of the reds, some of the whites that are in the, uh, the oak because um, there was kind of varying colors of oak as well. So there was some more red pieces, uh, but it's kind of just pulling everything together. And this isn't going to be the final thing we do. So, you know, if you're watching up to this point, make sure you keep watching because this is only one step in this finish. So this is the first step, kind of, you know, getting this wash on, pulling everything together, kind of toning down some of the colors, uh, you know, making it a little bit of a drift woody look in a way. Uh, but we're we're not going to stop there. We're going to actually have another step. And that step is to use SFO. This is a Fusion Stain and Finishing Oil. And this is the color Cappuccino. So we're going to come back over with this uh, SFO. And again, I'm just working in small sections. But kind of just apply this. Now this is going to not only make it a little bit darker, uh, make it a little more on the brown side, but it's also going to add some protection. So if... You know, you've seen some of the other videos that I've used this in as an actual top coat over wood. Um, you know, it's it's kind of an all-in-one application. So typically, if you were doing this just over raw wood, uh, you know, you want to let it sit and soak in a little bit. But for this, we didn't want it getting too dark. We didn't want the SFO overpowering kind of the wash and the wood. So I am wiping this off, you know, fairly soon after I apply it and this is going to take it from more of you know that gray color from the wash and it's going to make it more of a brown color again just working in small sections i don't want to do too much to where you know it's soaking in too much and getting too dark i just want to make sure i'm getting the color on there and toning down that gray a little bit And as you can kind of see, the SFO pulls some of the, the wood grains, some of the things like that out again as well, which is really what we wanted.
And before I put all the drawers and everything back in, uh, it's nice and light. I'm going to put some of these nylon, some of these nylon buttons in the bottom here. Uh, these are especially nice for bigger pieces like this. Uh, so you don't risk scratching your floor or anything like that. Uh, it's just a good time to do it right now uh, with all the drawers out and the doors off. And as I usually do, I'm going to use Howard's Feed and Wax on the inside of these drawers. And I'm also going to apply it to the inside of the piece here on this raw wood. And again, just, just gives it a nice finish. It richens it up, covers up scratches, and it also smells really nice. And I was missing some screws on the hinges. They weren't all there. So I just kind of went into my stash here, picked out a few that were pretty close if not exactly the same and I reattached the hinges. Now these hinges did have a lot of finish caked onto them so I did just take them to my wire wheel and just kind of you know got them all cleaned up. Um, the only part of these that's showing is the the long piece so you know I wasn't worried about anything scratching or anything like that I just wanted to get them cleaned up quick and it you know, made quick work of it. And so these doors uh, were a little bit loose. There was nothing holding them in. So I'm just gonna put some of these door catches in here just to hold the door shut and give it a nice finishing touch. So just a reminder, here's what the piece looked like before. And here's what it looks like now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I think it turned out beautiful. Uh, you know, we kept as much as we could with the wood grain and everything. I think that wash kind of really blended everything together uh, before we did that final coat of SFO. So I think it turned out great. Uh, we personally love it and would probably keep it if we had a place to put it, uh, but unfortunately we don't. So this one's gonna be going out to the shop for sale. We appreciate all of you being here with us and watching our videos and we've just been, so grateful for all of the views and subscribers we have gotten in a really short amount of time. Um, but I know we've been getting people from all over the place, you know, from Greece, Russia, Brazil, and obviously the United States. So, you know, leave a comment below where you guys are from. I'm really interested to kind of see where, um, you know, everybody's from. And, you know, I just think it's really cool that you can kind of connect with people around the world. Uh, over a common interest. So if you haven't already, feel free to hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to stick around. And until next time, make sure you check out some of our other videos. We'll see you later, guys.